Look, I you wouldn't have known. No, I wouldn't receive our sister into this chapel in the full confidence of the death, the burial, and the resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, it's our privilege today to help you to say your farewell to Mass. And please note that I use the word farewell and not goodbye. Death is not final. Death is a door that each one of us must walk through. Our purpose in this service today is to glorify God for lending much to us. We're here to honour her life. We're here to pray for her and ask the Lord Jesus to take care of her for us. We're here to commit her body to its natural end. And we're here to find comfort and support in the Lord and from one another. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who trust in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and trusts in me will never die. Sometimes when we're faced with the grief of death, we think that God doesn't understand where we are. But I want to tell you that on the night that Jesus Christ was betrayed, and knowing that he was going to be crucified for our salvation, his concern wasn't for himself, it was for his disciples. Because he knew that after he had been put to death, they would be bereaved as you are today. And so he took his disciples aside and looking into their eyes, he said these words to them. Don't let your hearts be troubled. You trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, will I not receive you to myself? And today as we gather here in love and in sadness, the Lord Jesus says to you and to me, come to me, bring me your burdens, bring me your griefs, 
give them to me, and I will give you in return my peace and my calm. Please come and bow our heads and pray. <laughs> Heavenly Fathers, we gather here today. We do so in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mindful of your promise that when we do that, you are with us by your Spirit. Father, thank you for your presence. Help us here today in this place, to sit beyond this place, to sit beyond this time. Help us, Lord, to picture in our mind's eye all of the wonderful things that you have prepared for those that love you. Help us be able to visualize as restored in youth, restored in vigor, marveling at the wonders of your kingdom, wrapped in your perfect, unconditional love, and loving each person dear to her heart. Those of us in this chapel, those that can't be with us because of distance or age or whatever. Father, please help us with these things I ask. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. We're going to commence our hymn singing by singing, make me a channel of your peace if you need the words from the service book, you'll find them on front five, uh, hymn 519. <coughs> Otherwise, you have your order of service. Now I am going to ask you please to follow the music because it does tend to be rather different when you play a computer recording than when you have an organist. So please be aware that sometimes it's a little quicker. So if you're able to stand, would you stand with me please? Otherwise you may see the difference. Make me a channel of your please.
she had a, a spark about her. Um, if I think about some of my fondest memories, this is maybe five year old, six year old, where we were being bright when we came to visit her to not leave marks on her walls. <laughs> but we always enjoyed the, the pound that we got, so we played ball. I always remember very fondly that when you had breakfast at my grand's house, there was always a splash of cream on the cold plate. I think that's quite a metaphor for how she lived her life. It's not just about getting wax, it's about having fun and being the most out of life as you know. So I think the thing that's given me a lot of comfort over the last few weeks is to understand that she's really lived a full life, that she created a lot of love, and I'm going to miss her very much. But I can only say that she's made the world a better place. So, you're quite good. It is with great sadness that I stand here today to say goodbye to my grandma. She was a wonderful lady who I look forward to visiting throughout my childhood and adult years. As Jamie says, she was one of the kindest people I know. You can always rely on grandma to spoil, treat you. This range from cream on your cornflakes in the morning to a steady supply of Yorkshire fish and chips. She was always keen to take you out for meals and she never forgot birthdays. When I was a student and li living in Ruff, I would visit Grandma and, it, and she would sort me out. She nursed me through recurrent tonsillitis and helped me cope with the slug of my junior doctor years. She loved to laugh and giggle. She perpetually had a different joke to tell and relished making other people laugh. She was so tickled by the list of swear words my younger brother and cousin could incorrectly produce at the age of five that she carried the piece of paper on which they wrote these words on around in her purse for 30 years. She was loyal and kept a really close group of friends throughout her life and they enjoyed Coronation Streets, Daily Mail crossword, lots of red wine, socialising and going on holidays together. Despite having a bad chest and very poor eyesight for the large, a large part of her life, she never complained. She looked on the bright side and tried to find ways to live with their symptoms. I have a lot of happy memories of my grandma. Even though she is now gone, these memories live on, and I feel she has instilled some of her kindness, humour, positivity, loyalty and stoicism in me. I hope that I can pass some of these characteristics on to the people I meet in my life, and in doing so, help my grandma live on. I don't have the same childhood memories as maybe some of the boys do because my close relationship with Grandma did not fully develop until I was an adult. And when I went to university to leave, that's when my mom and I became really close. And Mark and I, it's been a great privilege to care for her and, and share so many special times with her over the last sort of eight to ten years. Hard at times but it was never a chore. She became one of our best friends. She always had a wise word for me. She always told me when I was being irrational or stupid, but she was always there to say, go do it, girl. Go, go show them that, uh, that that's the right thing to do. And so, <coughs> but I've also lost a friend, and Mark feels the same. She had such a wonderful young outlook on life, considering her age. I remember when I first met Mark and we discussed moving in together and I thought, oh, I'm so upset, how am I going to tell my grandma I'm going to be living in sin? And I rang her up and she said, oh goodness, goodness gracious. She said, I would have loved to have tried your granddad before I walked in. <laughs> <laughs> and at that moment I knew that she had a really, really young um, and supportive attitude to, to all of us into to what we were what we would do in life. And as has already been said, she had a lovely circle of friends and um, I'm privileged to have been part of that circle for such a long time. Um, there's a poem in the, in the Order of Service that, that I needed to read because I think this sums up everything that Grandma felt in life. Whatever happened, however bad things were, which sometimes would be me being late or um, the milkman not arriving on time, she, she always had a way of looking at life. And so the poem goes, You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she has lived. 
You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back. Or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't hear her. Or you can be full of love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday. Or you can be happy tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only <coughs> that she is gone. Or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back. Or you can do what Brian would have wanted. We can smile, we can open our eyes, we can love and we can live on. Although it's a very unhappy day for all of us gathered here, um, I'd love to try and make you chuckle, as I'm sure Grandma would. She always had a joke to tell. Like the one about the man who walks into the butcher's shop and goes to the butcher. I bet you ten pounds you can't reach that prime beef on the top shelf. And the butcher thinks about it for a minute and goes, Nah, mate, the stakes are too high. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something that I think I always treasure about Grandma. No matter how bad things were or hard things got, she could always laugh, and she could always make others laugh. I was walking around Eaton Square the other morning, on a bright spring morning, and that's where she lived uh, down in London during the war. It's a beautiful square and all ornate buildings, and I, I, I tried to picture her there at that time, and I could, I could imagine bombs falling and sirens blaring, and I could imagine her being scared as she would be, sharing a joke with her friends to try and keep us very safe. So at times like this, you cast your memories back to the childhood memories of grandma. I remember a kind lady with creases in her face and circles in her hair. I remember the excitement of waiting for her car to arrive and then rushing out as soon as it appeared on the drive. I remember the one pound bribes she used to give us to stop us putting our grubby little fingerprints on her new wallpaper. <laughs> and I remember the sweets and the fish and chips. I always cherish these childhood memories, but on top of these, I remember the adult lessons she taught me as a grown Her kindness to her friends, family, and even strangers, and to even poor hungry students like myself. Her integrity and her ability to always see the best in people, and her patience, even despite the grubby little fingerprints appearing on the wallpaper. I never saw her get angry. And finally, her independence. She lived as alone as long as I'm as old, but she was never really alone. She had so many friends and family around her. I hope I can live a life as full and once to be as kind and as full of laughter. I'll end with a little poem on, on a life well lived. It's to laugh often and to love much, to win the respect of intelligent persons and the affection of children, to earn the praise of honest critics and to endure the betrayal of false friends. To appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to give of oneself, and to leave the world a little better, whether by a gracious child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To have played and laughed with enthusiasm and sung with exultation. To know that even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. Goodbye for me. I'm not Roger's grandchild but I am a neighbour to me, she was auntie Madge. I've been next door to her all my life, um, that I lived there. And there's lots of happy memories, and just a few that I'd like to share with you. And the memories of when I was younger, I used to go with my friend Richard, and used to say, let's go see auntie Madge, because she'll give us some chocolate. So I used to knock on the door, and sure enough, she gave us chocolate every time. She never complained, she never said go away or anything. But later on in life, I used to knock on the door and go see Auntie Madge, but I didn't want chocolate anymore. I just wanted to talk to her and her company, because as all the grandchildren have said, she had such um, a wicked sense of humour. Um, I loved to hear her tale. She was a really good storyteller. and um, She was interested in, in your family, as well as telling you about the family that I should have had. And, she had a fantastic neighbour growing up in the south where there were lots of lovely neighbours and had a really good thing going on. They had lots of parties, lots of fun, going to Scarborough. They called themselves the South World Swingers, which didn't have the connotations in those days. It was all quite innocent. Well, that's what they called them. <laughs> um, and some of the memories uh, of 
Well, I know from when Reg died and Cliff obviously to Madge and Margaret, I know Margaret can't be here today, but I, mean, I think she's in all her oh. thoughts that um, they had a really good partnership and went on holidays and all that kind of thing, so we came together. Um, but just a few things I remember of Madge. Um, She'd be coming in her back garden, so we lived next door to her, and she's always, you knew when she was there, she was, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then she'd be bent down, hard until at age 80, with her legs straight, and they were bent double, and you remember that. And then she'd hear my mum and say, Oh, Maureen, is that you? Yeah, yes, Madge. Oh, do you want to come round for a glass of wine or a gin and tea? So Maureen would go round, Margaret would talk to her across. Sheila had come back, come across from the next door. Before you know it, they were having some nice drinks and chats. And we used to have a coffee morning every Wednesday or Sunday, and then I think every day, basically. <laughs> um, and then later on, Auntie Brad wasn't as well, but we used to go and see her. And I just remember once in particular, about two years ago, I was going to um, on holiday, and she was ill, and she was laid in bed and she was asking to go to heaven because she'd have enough. And I said goodbye to her and I said, you know, I love you and bye. And I thought that is the last time I'll see her. So I went on holiday, texted her and two days later, she said, How's Auntie Matt? She said, She's fine, she's having a lunch in peace her. <laughs> And that happened a few times, and then I once said to Auntie Madge, when she said again, I wish the Lord had said, I said, well, one minute you go to heaven, next minute you go to Pisa. I said, you don't know where, where you are. But she was happy to be at even, I think. And the staff at Pisa were really upset, and Paul in particular, he sent his love and condolences. And just one last thing, in the... Kay Danny Frederick had a meal with Auntie Madge, and uh, that was really nice. I went back to Sue's and I asked her to say one last thing that she always used to say in a cheery voice and that's doodle bit, doodle <laughs> and she said it didn't she? And that was the last thing. So doodle and doodle bit back to match. Auntie Match was a neighbour um, from me being a few of myself until I moved away in my early twenties. And she and Uncle Reg were the only dads of his friends living on Southway. And they shared many raucous occasions and parties over the years. And Mum and Auntie Madge were neighbours for over 55 years. Auntie Madge was more of an auntie to me than any real auntie. And I've only got happy memories of her. And she shared all the ups and downs in our lives. When we, as similar to what um, Alex was saying, whenever you pop next door as children, which was very frequently, she'd always have some sweets or polos in her cupboard. And even the same for our children and my grandchildren. And I can remember when we were little and we used to have a, a shared telephone line. And if she wanted to speak to us, we'd knock on the door on the wall with a hairbrush. And that meant pick up the phone and need to speak to you. <laughs> um, we'd always know when she was on the way round to our house because she could hear her humming as she passed the window. And um, she had a fantastic sense of humour and she was very good at relating jokes and stories with a few added embellishments which made it all the more interesting. Auntie Madge was always positive. She was in interested in what we were doing and what was going on in the world. She was a very kind and caring person. And in her later years with a failing eyesight, she still remained buoyant and you never heard a complaint. As a family, we loved her dearly and all feel privileged to have known her and for her being part of our lives. And she used to say to us so often when we were little, do you give that too much?
that will never stop because death cannot stop now. Beloved, I'm going to ask you please to join me in the Lord's Prayer if you have your order of service there. This is the prayer that Jesus teaches us as his followers to say. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's my privilege to hand over to Reverend Rod, who's going to come and share the eulogy on behalf of the family. Thank you. Good morning. Very difficult to follow that. But it says a moment for reflection because one of the both sad but also uplifting dimensions of this kind of service is it gives us a real opportunity to celebrate, to be thankful, to focus. The things that maybe you already know, but to give them a public airing. Because I believe that every life worth lived, every life well lived, has something to teach us. And this is a season for Christians of reflection in the season of Lent. And so in a strange way, maybe in God's providence, we are provided today with a real opportunity to learn from a life well lived. And as I was listening to the tributes, there were two words that kept on coming back to me. One was the word kindness, which I think every one of you used, at least once. Kindness, a very simple word, but actually a deeply profound and important one. And interestingly enough, by one of those apparent coincidences, although those of us that follow a spiritual pathway tend not to believe in coincidences, but in my morning prayers this morning, I read a poem called Kindness, which I would like in a moment or two to read to you as a kind of prayer. Because as we think about Madge's kindness expressed in many different ways through a long life, a life not without its challenges, a life which had its, had its share of loss and pain, but nevertheless a life in which there was no bitterness, there was joy, there was celebration, and that quality of kindness seems to shine through in so many different ways. And the other word that I want us to think about is the word hospitality. Maybe not a word that was used as such, but there were so many examples given of the sharing of food, the sharing of drink, the sharing of company, of friendship. And you know exactly what those words are going for you. In a way, there's very little need for me to say anything more specific than that, because those of you that knew Madge, and those of you that know the people whose lives were shaped by Madge, will know what that quality of hospitality means continues to me. And so I want to just share with you a few words from the scripture from John chapter 6, some words of Jesus, who said to his disciples, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever, whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Simple words, but words that are all about the hospitality that we are offered and invited to by God. But also, and this is the beauty of it, the hospitality we can share ourselves in offering. And I believe that Madge's hospitality did indeed reflect the hospitality of God. It was an aspect of the Spirit working through her. Whether it was named or not as that, whenever hospitality is shared, whenever someone is welcomed, whenever someone is fed, we find God. And so all those examples, which might appear to be fairly simple, they're not necessarily the things that 
get written up in the newspapers. But they're nevertheless the really important things in life. And that hospitality was shaped through her marriage, through her upbringing of her children, through her wider family as it grew and extended, but also with great generosity to neighbours and friends. And it was really nice to hear that balance of tributes from family, neighbours and friends this morning. Because what we celebrate is that gift of hospitality. And that's something we can all take on this service. Because surely the best way of honouring Madge's journey through life is to practice what she practiced, yes. to speak as she spoke. And although today is a sad day, as farewells are, to keep alive those important spiritual qualities. As I suggested, Madge's journey through life had its share of challenges and difficulties. Losing Reg at the relatively early age was a great challenge to her, but she continued to live out her values of love and of acceptance. Moving to Litchfield just quite recently was also a challenge, but she took that very stoically and positively, and she was well cared for in the nursing home. But she clearly wasn't somebody who stood still and the flexibility of attitude and an openness to change, to new things, had a lively interest in life throughout all that life threw at her. And that's a real quality, really something to reflect on, to learn from. Because Madge in her life teaches us that we do not need to be cynical. We do not need to be sceptical. We can be responsive to the challenges of life with kindness, with hospitality, with joy, with generosity, with humour, with life. And so in a way, I don't need to say anything more because you know, you know what you are remembering. And after the service, there'll be time at St John's House in Litchfield to share perhaps more of those memories, more of those personal memories. But I want to leave you with two pieces. Firstly, this prayer point called kindness, because I think it kind of sums up much of what I've been hearing this morning. And as we offer this, it's a prayer that we ourselves will receive the gift of kindness, because that, I think, will be Madge's great legacy. So this is a piece called Kindness. Although I am grateful, I rarely appreciate the kindness of others as deeply or as warmly as I should. Help me to be attentive to the kindness which comes to me. For the small courtesies and considerations <coughs> the delicate movements of graceful politeness. Help me, I pray, to remain kind in my words and in my attitudes, in my habits and in my spontaneous actions. Give me a kindly spirit, kind words and a kind heart, and save me from the cynical and cruel tendencies which lie within. Save me too from being anodyne or dull, Save me most of all from the curse of patronising niceness. May I be neither a giver nor a receiver of anything bland or diminishing. Make me robust and kind, honest and kind, compassionate and kind. Make me a good companion to others, many others. Whether our time together is marked by decades or seconds, give me the gift of kindness. Finally, the poem printed on your order of service. The poem of trust in God's welcome for match today. When we have done all the work we were sent to earth to do, we are allowed to shed our body which imprisons our soul. Like a cocoon encloses the future butterfly. 
And when the time is right, we can let go of it, and we will be free of pain, free of fears and worries, free as a very beautiful butterfly, returning to God. So we pray that Marge may rest in peace and rise in glory, and that we may know the peace and hope of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ this day and the Lord. Stole some of my words. <laughs> but then that's what Brother Rob said. When we do a service together, I don't know what the Lord is going to say. He doesn't know what I'm going to do, but the Holy Spirit does. And so the Lord knows how to do it in these things. And as Rob was talking, one of the things that I do believe is that I just set you a challenge to imitate her. So that when folks come and knock on your door, you're there for them. And it's a big challenge because. It's something that is really needed in our society today. And I ask you please to imitate her as what is said. I'm going to ask you very quickly to close your eyes for a moment. I'm going to ask you to picture imagine a happy time. And as you picture her, I want you please to visualize her and what she's doing. Perhaps you can hear in your mind's eye, your mind's ear, what she's saying or singing or doing. Perhaps you can remember some of those funny little things those warm things, those loving things, those encouraging things. Let those memories encourage your heart for your journey ahead until you meet again. Father, thank you for lending much to us, for her birth into this world, for her journey through it, for the difference that she made in this world. Thank you for the example of your love and condition that she's displayed to everybody. Thank you for the richness of her character and the depth of her love. Thank you for lending her to us. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we're going to sing our second hymn. We're going to sing the Lord's My Shepherd. And as we sing the Lord's My Shepherd, I'm going to ask you to pay particular attention to the third verse, which says that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we do not need to fear any evil. I'm going to ask you if you're able to stand. Would you stand with me? Otherwise, remain seated as you sing the Lord's Mission.
Beloved, it's at this point in our service that we pray for Madge, and as we pray for her, I'm going to ask you, please, would you, where you are, please pray and ask the Lord Jesus to take care of her for us until we meet again. Please join your heart with us. Heavenly Father, you created us, and you have redeemed us. By your power, Christ conquered death and entered into glory, confident of your victory over death, and putting our trust in your promises to us. We entrust our sister Madge to your mercy, your care, your love, and your compassion. And we thank you for the forgiveness of sin and the resurrection to eternal life. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Beloved, it's at this point in our service that we say our earthly farewell, and so that you know what's going to take place. In a moment I'm going to say the committal, and during that time the curtains will close. If you find the curtains closing distressing or uncomfortable, please close your eyes. Look away, wait until I've finished speaking. If you're able to stand, would you stand with me as a mark of respect and much? Thank you. Having commended our sister Madge to God's mercy and care, we now commit her body to its natural end, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through Christ Jesus our Lord, who will transform our frail human bodies that they may be conformed to his glorious heavenly body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Beloved, our service is almost concluded. But when you go from here today, as what has said, we know you'll share the wonderful stories. The one that was shared with me was about her dressing up in her husband's clothes and uh, pretending to be Captain Mannering. I have a joke in my mind that Sue told me that will never go away about the two gentlemen that were in the mental institution walking out with a nurse and a bird coming over making a mess on one of their heads and the nurse saying, you hold on here, I'll go and get some tissue. And the other one saying, well, what's the point of that? When she gets back, that bird will be miles away. <laughs> but these are match, and these are the things that we remember when we go from here. Please don't talk about her sad times. Remember her happy times. And please, when you talk about her, do it with gratitude in your heart to the Lord for lending her to us. And please look forward to the time that you meet together again. I beg of you, put your trust in Jesus Christ. I promise you, he will not fail. I want to thank you all for being here today. I know that you, some of you have come many miles. But it's so important. And please, when you go back, tell the folks that you've left to come here about the service and the funny parts too. Now, I ask you please to bow your head for the final blessing. Heavenly Fathers, we leave this place today. Help us, Father, to put our hand in your hand. To walk with you to talk with you, to share our pains, our sorrows, our joys and our gladness, to know you and the power of your resurrection in our life each and every day. Help us to trust you, Lord. Be our comfort and our support in the sad times, be our encouragement in the happy times. And now the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon each one of you and remain with you for eternity. Beloved, there is an opportunity, if you so wish, to make your own personal tribute to Madge in the form of a donation. And the proceeds will go as a memorial to Madge to the family's chosen charities. So please be ready as we leave. We're now going to listen to our final piece of music, a piece by John Rutter. The Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you for being here.